Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Collegist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GOE Collegist. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography. Now in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to talk about the hierarchy of urban settlements. Now before this lecture, we have already talked about the rural settlements, the various types of rural settlements, their patterns, factors and several other things. Now let's look into the urban settlements and their spatial arrangement, their hierarchy and several other concepts. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the video videos with others as well. So now let's discuss these concepts of hierarchy of urban settlements. Now we already know about the settlements as a concept. Now what are these two words that is hierarchy and urban. So what are these two words all about? What is hierarchy and what is urban? Where is it coming from? So the word hierarchy is coming from the Greek origins that is hierarchia which basically means what? Rule of a high priest that is the order, right? So it means what? There is something at the top and there is something at the bottom. So order is the highest of the priest, right? And rest everybody falls the within that order. So it means what? There is a hierarchy. It means the ruler is sitting at the top and the ruled is sitting down. This kind of concept is called hierarchy concept, right? So there is a ordering in terms of settlement geography, we say, right? And then there is another word called urbanus coming from the Latin origins, which basically means what? A city fashion. What is it? Polished behavior, refined people, cultivated, courteous. These are the characteristics of urbanization. Urban people are supposed to be smart people. Right. So that is where this word is coming from urbanus. So now when we combine these two words that is hierarchy and urban it means what we are looking into settlement geography through these terminologies that what is the hierarchy in urban settlements. Is there a hierarchy because of some particular reason of urbanization? What is its structure? What is its function? What are the components that we are going to look into? Right. So before we go ahead, one thing is very important. That is this particular diagram to look into. What does this diagram showcase? It's like a pyramid diagram where at the bottom you see isolated dwelling and at the top you see conurbation. But there is one important thing here which you can see that as you move up this hierarchy, right, what happens? The increase in size of settlement, higher population and more services. Three things that grow alongside if you keep climbing this ladder of hierarchy, right? So if conurbation is at the top, what will be the characteristics of conurbation? It will have the highest settlement size, means highest number of people inside this right then what is there more services in terms of services the branching the variety would be more the occupational patterns would be diversified right and obviously the number of settlements would be less right so what you see this side the frequency that is occurrence of these kind of settlements which sit at the top are lesser it means what in another simple way that isolated dwellings are more in numbers but less in services right less in terms of their population size then next is your hamlet right then is village then small town then large town then city and the mega city big city and the conurbations right so this is the hierarchy this is the ladder right so this is what we are going to look into the hierarchy of urban settlements now let's understand that what is this urban hierarchy all about so urban hierarchy ranks in each city based on size of population residing within the nationally defined statistical urban area this is very important to consider now what is an urban area who defines it so there is a standard definition of each nation right so what is the standard definition in India if you observe what is an urban area in India so an area where at least two-third of population is involved in non-farm activities non-agricultural activities non-primary activities that is most of the people in urban areas are involved in secondary activities tertiary activities right and second thing is that population should be more than 5,000 people so if 5,000 people and above are living in a settlement then only it can be classified as urban settlement right then further if there is a 
metropolitan area where you have what municipality municipal corporation if these kind of institutions are present then it is supposed to be categorized under the urban area also if there is a cantonment right so sometimes smaller settlements even lesser than 5000 in numbers but because there is a cantonment area that is classified by census of india under towns so this is regarding the classification of urban areas in india so that's why we say here that it all depends upon what the people who are residing and it is nationally defined statistical urban area now why is it important look here the first point it tells us that within a system of cities some of the cities will grow to become very large cities while others will not become that large and relatively they will be smaller in terms of the expansion of the cities in terms of size of the cities right also it also refutes the expectation of optimally sized city it means if we say that this is the optimum size of a city you cannot determine it because it will take its own course and it will keep changing some cities will grow to become huge large cities but some cities will not grow after a certain point of time right so this is what is important here and then the third important point is that it establishes the city as belonging to an interrelated network right it means what that cities are not in isolation they don't grow in isolation there is an interrelated network where cities growth affect each other right so cities are interconnected with surrounding areas villages and other smaller cities around them right so there is a network now how do we know this system of cities so for that we need to learn about a scholar and his work so who is the scholar we have talked about this scholar when we were talking about the regional synthesis quantitative revolution then we talked about this scholar in models and theories in human geography so if you have not watched the videos on models and theories or maybe aerial differentiation and other concepts which is there in human geography you can watch there so the scholar is b j l berry brian berry's concept in 1964 and now remember 1964 was the time when quantitative revolution was the prime in geography right so settlements were analyzed through quantitative techniques that's when the concept of urban systems right the process of urbanization and urban systems right the systematic concept of urbanization that one is connected to the other and there is a system operation going on in the cities right so this work was done by Brian Berry and the name of the work is cities as systems within systems of cities right so this is what we say as the system concept which was introduced by Brian Berry in 1960s which helps us to understand this hierarchy model this interlinkage of one smaller settlement with the higher order settlement right so if you look here what is the characteristic this diagram gives us a little clue about it how there is a interrelated networks look here so economy and livelihood infrastructure and services space and its settlements social and cultural aspects and politics and governance all these five pillars are integrated into a system to make it an urban system that is very important to understand now these urban systems are of different orders some are lower order some are higher order and that is what we say is hierarchy but how do we know which is lower order which is higher order so let's understand now so urban areas exhibit a large range of population sizes from hamlets to global cities we we'll look into this structure we have already learnt about it right so what you observe here settlements with large population that provide more and diverse services are always higher up in urban hierarchy it means as we go climb the ladder it means what city size in terms of population in terms of services in terms of branching of economy diversification of economy will be more but their frequency will be less so for example how many metropolitan cities are there in india there are major big megapolis cities still mumbai delhi kolkata and chennai are the biggest cities in india and then there is next level of cities like ahmedabad pune bangalore and several others then there are next level tier cities so what you observe in terms of understanding of this hierarchy that there will be fewer big cities extra big cities and then there will be next order cities and next order settlements and gradually to the lowest ones that is till a farm size the isolated dwellings right so it all depends upon the population and the characteristics related to services right so what you observe here that urban hierarchy may be illustrated by a pyramid structure that we always look into and settlements at the bottom of pyramid have small rural population so what is this this is from rural to actually highest order of urban this is what exactly urban hierarchy means
right now let's understand few important points which are important to understand urban hierarchy model so hierarchy of urban settlements is arranging them vertically from top to bottom that we see and what are the important factors on which we arrange them size of population their functions and their sphere of influence so size of population is how many people reside right in a particular city that is the size and then what is their functions which is talking about the services branching of economies right various branches of economy what kind of function are there so medical function educational function and several other functions recreational functions that we see so as a city grows big as it is bigger in the ladder of hierarchy it will have greater number of functions for example if you go to a village and if you want to buy a car you cannot buy a car but if you go to a town and bigger town obviously you'll find so many showrooms of the cars so what you observe in a village basic facilities in terms of services would be only available but as you go up in the hierarchy small town big town megapolis as you go ahead services of the consumer nature that is highest level highest order of consumerism is available in the biggest cities so we say that city functions are the second features then there is sphere of influence now what is this it is talking about distance factor that how far does that settlement have influence in terms of what services connectivity accessibility so you look into this particular thing now here is food factor so there is a small settlement a and then the big city that is b look into the how far people go for food services right but if it is a bigger city people travel for far distances to center of the city for the food services because it is diversification lot of restaurant variety of cuisines are available isn't it if you go into motor vehicle as i was telling you that if you want to buy a small bike maybe in a small city also a small town also you can get a bike for yourself but if you really want a high end bike say bmw bike or some other bike you have to really go to the bigger cities or maybe to the highways in today's world where big showrooms of big branded bikes are available right so that's in terms of motor vehicle so that's what we see is sphere of influence it means what influence will be more of the higher order settlements because they have diversification they have branching in terms of their services they have varieties available so it has variety it means it will have greater influence for example in india many people travel to mumbai every day it's a financial capital many people come to delhi every day for a variety of services education health and several others isn't it that's what we say that delhi has a national influence mumbai has a national influence isn't it but how many people from all walks of life go to kanpur or to allahabad that's what we say is the next level next tier cities which have lesser area of influence right so that is one of the examples now further if you observe the size of sphere of influence is dependent on these factors what are these factors look here number and types of services it provides accessibility of the settlement it means what transport facilities very important to take care of and amount of competition from surrounding areas because how much is the attraction to other areas why people will come to this settlement not to the other settlement so this is also very important factor right so what you observe larger settlements and conurbations have larger areas of influence right and there is more centripetal forces that is people coming to the bigger cities that is attraction right centripetal forces towards the center is more is greater in higher order settlements right so that's important to understand now look into the settlements in order of size if you want to right so from isolated dwelling to the megalopolis that we say 10 million plus from a few buildings this is what we say is the pyramidal structure the hierarchy right so if you can observe here what is there hamlet has around 100 people village have 100 to 1000 people then towns have 1000 to 20000 people in this range then large town have more than 2 lakh people cities have more than 10 lakh people and somewhere large cities are million plus cities that we observe then we have metropolis that is about 3 million people more than 25 lakh people if you observe and conurbation 3 to 10 million people means about a crore of people living there and then you have megalopolis which is more than 10 million people 
right? So this is in order you can understand the size of these settlements. And as you have more people, you have variety of services available, areas of influence grow, important centers are there for every walk of life, for every aspect, right? So in simple way, this is what you observe the difference between the lower order centers and higher order centers. So you can pause the video and you can note it for yourself. What is the characteristic of lower order center? For example, close together, smaller population, fewer services, smaller threshold population, short range distances, people traveling, lesser accessibility. But higher order settlement, they are very less in number, but they are greater distances where people love to travel to, to those bigger cities, right? Large population, wide scale of services that are available, then large threshold values of population, sphere of influence is greater right and then large range of the goods and services right so what happens this is what makes the hierarchy of settlements now let's look into a few of the examples for example hierarchy of land use is also there from the outskirts of a city to the inward part or the central part of the city this is also one kind of hierarchy that exists in urban settlements so city center if you observe is the biggest marketplace and then as you walk away from this towards the periphery, that is from the green belt or agricultural land, as you go towards the center of the city, land use change you can observe, right? So this is also kind of a spatial hierarchy that you can observe, right? City center, high quality private housing, then you have supermarkets, retailing, then further as you go to the outskirts of the city, you'll see a considerable land use change. Right. So many models and theories we are going to look into by this particular hierarchy of land use as well. Right. Now, if you observe in terms of the governance, what kind of hierarchy do you see in the governance? Look here, government of India, then we have state governments, then we have divisions like district level, we have Zilla Parishad. And then you have blocks, tehsils, municipal corporations, municipality, city councils. And then you have the gram panchayats, that is village, and then further the ward system. Isn't it? So what do you observe? The urban areas are here and rural areas are here. This is the divide, right? So if you observe, this is the level we are talking about that from here to here, there is a hierarchy, right? In terms of if you observe the administrative hierarchy. So hierarchy is a ordering of any particular kind of service or any particular kind of the state or environment that we say, right? So if you look into settlements, we observe the hierarchy in terms of the smaller settlements to the bigger settlements and how smaller settlements and bigger settlements have a relationship. They are not in isolation, they are linked. For example, how they are linked? Through the access channels, through the service channels. For example, people from all across India go to New Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, bigger cities or nearby cities for services like education, job and health facilities and several other facilities, isn't it? That's how the linkage is there. So to fro linkage of goods and services, people moving, these are the things that we we'll look into when we say there is a hierarchy. Now, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more about the hierarchy and how the spacing of these settlements have happened, how the primacy has taken place, how the rank size rule has taken place, right? And all several concepts. But to understand this hierarchy, we must understand this pyramidal structure that we say from isolated dwellings to the conurbation that we looked into. So now, when we have learned in details the various aspects of the hierarchy of urban settlements, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more about the urban land use, types and patterns, of urban settlements, classification, theories and several other topics. So please subscribe to our channel, do share the videos and be with us. All the best.